Ian Melcham, Melcham looks inside. May go for goal. Around the corner. A perfect start for the Dees. Oh, he just willed himself through. And it's going to end in a goal. A very warm welcome to Inside Melbourne, presented by our partner Zurich, our friends at Zurich, who are doing a great job with the podcast this year. Joining me, co-host Katie Price from Network 10. Hello, Katie. Hey, Stanners, great to be with you. How good is this, talking all things demons? It is great, isn't it? Um, we might just say straight off the top, Tommy Morris, he's, um, he's made the decision to step away from the podcast, just in light of his recent expanded role at Fox Footy, but it's great to have you along and another Dees fan out there. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a good week, short week, obviously, but I think that's maybe not a bad thing. We get straight back into things against Essendon. We do indeed. And our special guest today, co-captain of the Melbourne Football Club, Jack Viney. Jack, welcome along. Thanks, Stannis. Thanks, Katie. I hear you've <laughs> been a, a big listener to Inside Melbourne through the weeks. <laughs> I love a, uh, I love a podcast. I yeah. uh, feel a bit like I'm on the Joe Rogan show here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, you were. let's get stuck into to Tuesday night because, um, well, 46-point loss. Oh, it felt a lot closer than that for mine, but you sat up there in the coach's box. First of all, that must be bloody tough for you, sitting up there in the coach's box. Yeah, it, it is. It is tough. Um, you just want to play. Like, yeah, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a coach. <laughs> um, I'm there to play footy. So, you know, watching on um, and, and feeling like you can, you know, help your teammates in a way. Um, it's certainly, certainly frustrating, but you just got to kind of, you know, it is what it is and, mm. um, you know, you can't do too much. So you just, you just try and get better and make sure you're out there, uh, as soon as you can. I think Goody spoke after the match and said, it seemed like a step forward. Bernie Vince said the same thing. Certainly that intensity and effort was there right from the beginning. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, definitely. I thought, uh, especially our first quarter, um, the, the response in terms of our effort, intensity, contest stuff. I feel like second and third quarters were pretty good as well. We, we were always in the game. Um, we matched them within, in that regard. I, I just felt Richmond were, were a more polished side. Um, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, get any scores on the board that would reward us for our for effort. Um, and Richmond would just be able to score that one or two easy goal. And, you know, when you go into to quarter time feeling like you'd you, kind of we're on top but you're down on the scoreboard it's a little bit flattening um so i think that's where uh i guess our growth is coming from is getting a bit of reward for our effort it is flattening and, and a few of the supporters that i've spoken to in the wake of that loss uh, probably more so given it's a second sort of heavyish loss in the space of a couple of weeks they're, they're pretty frustrated you understand their frustrations too a hundred percent um you know our, our supporters have, have been tortured for a long time they're they're just crying out for some success, and uh, the last two weeks have been been poor performances. Um, I, I think uh, the Hawthorne game certainly a poor performance. I thought uh, for five ten minutes was was really bad uh, against Richmond, but for three quarters I felt yeah. um, our effort and intensity around the ball was uh, was right up there, and uh, no no doubt we're we're not in great form at the moment as a, as a side and um, looking to to change that around pretty quickly and confident we can do that mm. um but yeah i felt felt our effort um was was back to being you know good quality in the last two matches there's obviously been those lapses in the games and particularly that last quarter give us an insight into the coach's box and what's going on there is goody chucking the phone is he does he get angry what's it like no it's it's not it's not too animated up there like i think the coaches do a good job realizing that there's there's not much they can kind of, you know, getting up and angry and animated, it, it's, it can't really change much. So they're, they're cool, calm, trying to work out strategies to, to get the, the game back looking how we want it to and try and stop the bleeding a bit. So, you know, they're, they're throwing around different moves up there, um, you know, getting people back, changing around positions. So that they, they understand that, you know, Goody's very good at it, I think, just understanding that you've got to be in a calm headspace to make clear decisions. Do so you speak up in the coach's box? Uh, I try to. Oh, no, I don't try to. But when I, when I see something or I feel something's a certain way and I, I don't feel like, um, you know, it might be touched on, then I'll, I'll just kind of speak with, uh, with Ben Matthews or Justin Plapp in a midfield group. Um, I might mention something to Goody as well. So, um, you know, I feel like I've, if I'm going to be in there, I'm, I'm not just going to say nothing and I might as well contribute. Um, but at the same time, the coaches 
uh, do a great job and I don't need to um, yeah, step over them or anything like that. They, uh, I'll just chip in here and there and if I observe something. A couple of shining lights, uh, a few takeaways from that match. I, I really – I was wrapped for Sammy Wiedemann. I thought he presented well. Mm. He looked – he looked really good out there. He looked comfortable out there. Is that the sense you got? And, and what uh, did he have to say yeah, after the match? I agree. I, I sent him a message after the game. I said, mate, um, I thought you were terrific out there. I'm not too sure. And that's probably something uh, internally um, as a teammate, I don't really care about his mm. stats or mm. his goals or you know that kind of stuff. That's not something that I, I look at and value. Um, I'm more looking at um, you know the contest he provided, the effort, um, you know, the team first he showed for our football club and I thought that was outstanding. Um, and like you said, I felt he, he, he looked comfortable out there. Yeah. He was launching at it and, um, you know, the other stuff will come. So um, I, I'm sure there are probably fans out there that might be saying, oh, he's, he didn't play that well because he didn't, you know. Well, he he's crashing have, packs. He's doing the he right thing. He didn't have touches you know. or he didn't, he didn't get much of it. But, you know, that's not how I um, kind of uh, reflect on games. And guys like him, uh, the future of the club. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, we've got to expose yeah. these type of players. And he, he played two, three weeks of like really good VFL football. So, um, you know, what are you going to do? You can't just keep him down there. You've got to reward the kid. So he was ready to come up and I thought he was uh, very good for us on the weekend or on Tuesday. Uh, how do you see the ruck at the moment? Obviously, Maxi Gorn just killing it. So many hit outs. I think it was... 50 on on the weekend, oh, on Tuesday, but just not able to capitalise when it comes to the clearances, the stoppages. How do you get better at that? And is it just opposition doing more homework on him or what's going on? Oh, we, we've certainly got to make better use of Maxi's, um, of his ruck work, obviously getting his hand to it. I think we've got to, um, you know, we've just got to work harder as a, as a unit, midfield unit, uh, to try and free some some people up and, and try and get a bit, bit happening in there. Um, because Max is so dominant, it, it does make it easier for opposition to mm. prepare for us um, because that they'll see where he's hitting it, where he likes to hit it, and they can just, you know, clog that area up. So, you know, it does make it hard to, to win when, when you've got a dominant ruck. But having said that, we, we should be making uh, – we should be finding ways to, to get the most out of it, and at the moment we're not. Plus he doesn't have one Jack Viney at his feet. I think that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's get to that shortly. Um, this is Inside Melbourne, uh, presented by Zurich. Jack Viney, our special guest. We're going to take some questions from the out, outer very, very shortly. Um, but on Katie's point, um, how are you tracking, Jack? When, there's, look, can I just tease you with one question from the outer? These are a, a collation let's of our um, questions from our fans. Peter Franks off the top says, will you accept my foot if I give it up as a transplant? We need you back. <laughs> when are you back, foot. Jack? If my foot was ever that bad, I'd happily accept a <laughs> foot transplant. But uh, luckily, um, I'm only a couple of weeks away and um, I trained yesterday with the uh, VFL team. Um, I felt like I trained really well and, um, you know, a couple of people that saw me train said that's the, you know, the best they've seen me move for a couple of years now. So, um, you know, it was good going and waking up this morning and I, was, I feel sore, like a good soreness. Yeah. Um, mm. Like, you know, when you've trained hard. So mm. I haven't had that for a long time and, and feel like I'm... I'm really, uh, you know, tracking well now and uh, can, can finally see the, the game day coming up pretty, sh- pretty soon. Well, Essendon is next and um, something to look forward to this weekend in uh, the space of a, a debut, a big debut, and I speak of Charlie Spargo. Simon Goodwin revealed the news to the youngster uh, just 24 hours ago. Let's hear how it all went down. Oh, we want you to keep that aggressive edge on you, yeah. that tackle, that spirit that you bring. And I thought you were really solid, so I um, mean, you're going to play AFL this week. <laughs> yep. So well done, mate. Good that's stuff. Pretty yeah, that's yeah. exciting. Get out there and put that stuff on show. I've been impressed with how you played um, last week. I thought it was really good team roles and got the job done for yep. us. All right, so you've got to bring that into the AFL now. Yep. All right. Feeling all right physically? Yep. Yep. Good, good stuff. Well. So Simon Goodwin there, breaking the news to Charlie Spargo. Uh, what can you tell us about about the kid, Charlie? I, I absolutely love him. Um, you know, he's a small pressure forward, um, really does well at getting drop a ball. Um, you know, he, he puts his body on the line as well, not afraid to, to, to win a hard ball. Um, and I think he's just been very consistent in, in VFL. Um, 
you know, he's he's played the team roles, and and and, and the same thing. There's probably fans out there, or, or people in the in the public that say, are a bit surprised by this this call, but you know, internally, um, you know, how much we value the team first role playing. Um, he's he's been amazing at that, and that's why he gets his opportunity mm. at, at senior level. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to to see the kid run out. Um, he's been impressing all preseason, um, and I, he thoroughly deserves his opportunity. What's he like around the club? Because he seemed pretty low key when Goody delivered the news, but he he seemed like he was trying to keep <laughs> it under wraps a little. Yeah, he's pretty like quirky little character. Um, like when he first got to the club, he was very quiet, like barely said boo. But I, that's not. I don't think it's his natural go. He's, yeah, he's quite a a bubbly and and fun character. Um, you know, we always have laughs and do some silly dance moves <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> like. So he's uh, he's a funny funny kid without being like, you know, you're Max Gorn, you know, like getting in front of everyone and, and uh, being the centre of attention. Um, so, yeah, I, I Has really Has he got you covered with the dance moves? Uh, I mean, it would make a good good dance battle. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I wish I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, he's got some good moves. He's got some good moves. Uh, Jack, we've been dogged by a bit of bad luck in recent week. I use the word dogged for good reason. Uh, Christian Petrarca <laughs> oh. has yeah. apparently been savaged by his pooch. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, I feel sorry for the kid because, uh, you know, in recent – I bet no one believes that he's actually – Yeah, <laughs> well, in light of recent yeah. events in involving dogs. Years, dog, this, the dog excuse has been used a couple of times and may or may not have been true, so – uh, this time it actually is true and I'm sure there's people out there saying, oh, this one again. Mm. Um, but I think what was happening, he's got two dogs and they were just fighting and he's going to break it up and one's just nipped him. Um, and, uh, yeah, Petraka being a Petraka, he probably didn't think too much of it and it ended up kind of getting infected and uh, turning into something a little bit more serious. So, Do you know what sort of dogs they are? are they, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of hoping they're like big, savage <laughs> rock wheelers or something like that. Or are they, I was <laughs> going to say, are they... <laughs> Oh, he think he tells me they're like lab cross pointers or something, but they're definitely like barley breed <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he thinks they're pure bred, but they're not. <laughs> and he actually played with this injury on Tuesday night. Yeah, he did. He had yeah. it. Um, he had it all wrapped up yeah. and um, tried to look after it the best he can. But apparently, like if dogs bite you, there's like heaps of bacteria in their teeth and whatnot, and if you don't get tetanus or whatever, you have a pretty good chance of it getting infected. Now, would Seb ever do this to you? Never, never. This is no. your dog. No, Seb your is dog. a much better behaved dog. Um, he's got a much better father who taught him good values. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's got his own Instagram account. He's got his own Instagram. Most importantly. Which yeah. is? Uh, Sebastian dot the dot burner, I think. Okay. Who takes it's care run of by that? His, it's run by his mother. Yeah. Um, so I'm not fully across it, but. I think it uh, it does pretty well. He's almost got a bigger following than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just uh, I suppose on on Petrarca, how much are you going to miss him this week? Oh, heaps. Um, you know, he's one of our one of our good players. Um, you know, exciting character, and um, you know when he's around the football, we know something mm. good will happen. So he'll be dearly missed. Um, but I think the great opportunity is someone else gets. Um, Someone else gets their chance to, to prove prove themselves and I'm very confident uh, we've got good depth um, in, our, in our list and there's been some standout players in VFL level that will come in and play well. Jack Viney joining us on Inside Melbourne. We're going to take a very short break. Uh, we'll be back with questions from the outer here on Inside Melbourne. Thanks to our co-major partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich. For over 100 years, they've been ensuring the people and things you truly love – and just like you, they truly love footy and truly love Melbourne. You're the team at Inside Melbourne, Katie Price. Uh, we're lucky enough to have her company. She's our new co-host for the podcast, might I say, doing an excellent job this morning, Katie, and, and much more attractive than our previous <laughs> co-host. Am Thanks, I allowed to Dennis. say that? I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? Yeah, of course. Uh, Jack Viney's in the hot seat. Uh, Jack, let's get to a few of these questions from the outer. Um, I, I want to start with, with one about your dad, about, about Toddy. What's the best advice your dad has given you? This is from uh, Belinda Lee. Yeah, I think uh, one one piece of advice sticks out of my head and it is you have to be deserving of success. 
So, um, you know, what that means to me is you've got to work hard to, to be successful. Um, there's no shortcut. Uh, there's no gifts. Um, and it's purely, yeah, if you want to be successful, you've got to work for it. So that, that kind of stood out as my head um, growing up. I'll give you a good one from my mother. She from loves, Meg? Yeah. She's, uh, she's queen at cliches. Yeah. Um, she got a good one. Uh, when preparation meets opportunity, it equals success. So that's some, something that sticks out in my head as well. Who's tougher, you or your dad? <laughs> Depends <laughs> who you ask. Um, well, I mean, a lot of people say me. Clearly, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, one more on him. You've got the floppy hair going at the moment. I was going to say, it's getting I quite long. I wanted to. Uh, yeah, the headband. The haircut. Can we bring back the headband? Uh, no, I don't think Simon would allow that. Not in, um, not two in one side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I want a bit of feedback on my haircut. I had one last night. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, right. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, are you asking the listeners or us? Uh, well, you, you got well, you got more than me, so that's a start. So I'm, I'm very <laughs> envious. It's not hard though, Sam. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Well, uh, you're welcome back any time, Tom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're good, mate. Ollie Wines. Um, I, sort of, I saw a photo on Instagram, I think. You might have posted it uh, under 12's basketball yep, yep. Uh, back in the day. There's a few questions here about uh, he's coming out of contract. Yeah. What do you think? What do you reckon? Get him to the day. What do you reckon? Yes. Oh, I reckon it'll be awesome. Lockie, um, Lockie uh, suggests, would you love Ollie Wines at the club at the end of the 2018 season? I, I say yes. Um, any chance, you reckon? I'll be getting in his ear for sure. Um, I'll talk to uh, Tim Lamb and, and Jace Taylor at the footy club to see what we can work out. But... Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have him around the club. You know, I'm always for having some some bulls uh, yeah. in the team. I won't that. say no. <laughs> um, and he's a, he's a good mate and um, yeah, I feel like we could uh, get the best out of each other. How did you feel at draft time? Obviously, I mean, you knew him so well. Your dad knew his game so well. And then to – you must have been spewing for him not to end up here. Yeah, you know, like uh, from a kind of sentimental point of view, I would have loved to have Ollie here, but um, – at the time, it's it's a business call, um, mm. and I understood that and I understand that now. So, uh, at the time, the club thought they were doing the best, making the best decision um, with the picks they had. Um, you know, I feel like there were, uh, what did Ollie end up going seven? Yeah, six or seven. Seven. Didn't he? Yeah. Um, you know, there's six other teams that yeah. missed out on mm. him as well. Um, so I feel like there, there's those kind of uh, there's those kind of opportunities every draft. Um, for some reason, I'd, uh, maybe because he's my mate, he mm. keeps coming up as yeah. – and I'll be missed one with him. I'm, I'm not too sure why. But, yeah, at the time, you, you, you can't predict the future and um, the club thought they were doing the best thing. So you boys grew up together, spent a lot of time up on the Murray, up in Echuca together. So when you play against him, is there is there a bit of ribbing that goes on? Uh, have, has he delivered the better insult to you on the on the field or have you, <laughs> have you done to him? <sighs> He's I don't know, he's got terrible chat. Like, Has he? Yeah. He's not the uh like the witty kinda <laughs> or either am I either. Like we, we both kinda just go about our business and it's more if we get each other in a tackle we'll let yeah. you know about it. Um so yeah, we haven't really given each other good ones, but certainly when we play against each other we're not friends and we're trying to trying to hurt each other. And I think that's been that's been a theme since we first met. Like we've been really close friends, but uh at the same time we've been each other's enemies in in, in yeah. terms of competition, you know, like grade four, I'd win cross country one year, and next year Ollie's mm. training mm. the month after to try and win the year yeah. after, and he wins, <laughs> and then it's like, all right, now I'd same school swimming, same with school yeah. footy, so yeah, it's been a healthy healthy love hate relationship for a while. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair cool. <laughs> all right, I've got another one from the outer. This is from Patrick O'Brien. He said, who is the player at the club who would pick themselves for AFL Fantasy? Oh, there's a few. <laughs> a few oh, head, the the clear standout would be Petraka, but... He claims reckon, he doesn't play it. Yeah, and he probably doesn't, but if he did, he wouldn't Most <laughs> like. have the team as captain. <laughs> but I reckon the one would as be... As captain too. The one I know for certain plays it is Clayton Oliver. And, uh, oh, he would I know for sure, for, wouldn't he? Uh, I reckon he would put himself as captain. Um and he probably counts his stats at half time as well to see how he's tracking. <laughs> well, there's another question here: Who would be most likely to be caught watching themselves on YouTube? Would that be? Uh, oh, 
just, just oh, it's Petraka just, just comes to my tra- mind every time. Cell, you know, these kind of <laughs> things. It's just like Petraka comes first and foremost to front of mine. I'm gonna try and I'll try and come up with something a little bit different. Um, I reckon Hunty, Hunty, oh, yeah. Hunty would definitely have a look at himself, and you know, he's probably watched that barrel of his against. Um, who was it last year in oh, Darwin? Oh, Darwin, yeah. Can't remember. It, he's probably watched that a yeah, good couple of hundred times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a club, Melbourne Footy Club is a club that you've been immersed in pretty much all your life. Yeah. Um, give or take it a few years when, <laughs> when you cross the border into, into Adelaide. Yeah. But, um, I remember you as a, as a two, three-year-old um, causing all sorts of mayhem at Melbourne after match functions yeah. where your dad was appearing. What's it like to, to now captain the, the club? That your dad captained, and that has been such a big part of your life. Yeah, I think I just feel I just feel so um, you know humble and blessed. Um, you know, I certainly don't take it for granted, and um, you know, I just kind of pinch myself every now and then. Just you know, how lucky am I um, to be in this position? I've got so many great memories of my dad um, and the football club. You know, running around the change rooms. You know, the smell of deep heat, mm. which was <laughs> potent in those days. <laughs> um, and then to now be playing football for the same club um, and, and being uh, the captain with, with Nath of this club um, and of, uh, you know, people that I truly respect and care mm. for and want to see us make the most of an opportunity. So, yeah, I, I just feel really humble and I'm, I'm certainly not taking it for granted and I want to make the most of it. As an extension of that, and, and this question comes from Felicity, as co-captain, you must have a vision for where you want the team to be and the attitudes you want the team to carry into every game. Just tell us a bit about that. Oh, yeah, I think um, I could I could tell you my visions and it probably sound like, yeah, right, Jack, like keep dreaming. But, you know, I've, I've, whatever I've done, I've just wanted to do, to do the best I possibly can at it and... Um, you know, I, what I want to try and achieve with this team is, you know, is be the best mm. team like, ever, you know. Mm. And that, that probably sounds, I don't know if it sounds arrogant or, um, yeah, too far-fetched, but that's what I'm striving for and that's what um, I want to happen, um, whether whether we get there or not. And I think uh, hopefully we can fall somewhere sh- <laughs> just short of it. Mm. But, um, yeah, I want to have a sustained period of success Um with this group i don't think that sounds arrogant at all i think it sounds very good from melbourne supporters um point of view to we'd love to see that so yeah. yeah i mean speaking about growing up as the kid obviously you looked up to dad so much what about the other players that you were around in the dressing rooms back then who who was the idol hey just quickly i saw stinger the other day yeah I saw Stephen tingay in the mcc percy beams bar Jeez, he's looking good. <laughs> he's always looked he, good. He just he's always look, he's a picture I think, I think of he, fitness. He was my mum's favourite. When even yeah, I, my dad was playing, was, my yeah. my mum was like, you know, if I could, right, you know, get rid of <laughs> get rid of the old man and <laughs> jump ship, it'd probably be. I a think bit. he's still like he's still engaged in personal training and all the rest of yeah. it. Yeah, just looks. We should try and get him on the show. Actually, yeah. we might do that. Sorry, I interrupt. <laughs> we digress. Uh, the question again, please. Who do you um, who do you look up to? Oh, who, who were your favourites? Other my favourite, my favourite was Shane Woden. Mm. Um, that was a bit after my dad played, because um, I was kind of that age where I could start remembering footy and get into mm. it a little bit more. So I remember it might have been my seventh birthday party. Dad got the Melbourne uh, cheer squad to make me a banner oh, for yeah. my birthday to run out of, and he got Shane Woden to come down, and like. That was the best birthday I've ever had. Yeah. Like twenty first, trumped it. Um, so yeah, that was a, a real childhood memory having Shane my word and come down to hold the banner while I ran through it with all my mates <laughs> and our footy jumpers. So just do us a favour and please don't rock that diamond earring. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, while we got, did. I'll give you a hundred percent guarantee I won't be rocking a diamond oh, earring. No. <laughs> hey Katie, good segue. Speaking of diamonds. diamonds? Uh, oh, here you go. What about the engagement? Yep. Uh, how'd te- you do it? Yeah, ha- how'd you do it? Where'd you do it? Oh, What'd oh. you say? Obviously, we didn't marry me was part that. of it. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I've kind of been planning it for probably about four months. Um, kind of like November last year, I, I started to go and visit some jewelers to to see what was happening and, and the, the work out the process behind it. 
and I, and I worked out one jeweler that I really um, kind of respected and, and wanted to work with. And then it was about trying to find the diamond. And uh, that took a, a few months because I was pretty picky with, with what I was after. Um, and then I finally found one maybe start of Jan and then we got it made up, um, had all the, the kind of drawings up. Uh, got you it made designed up. it yourself? Yeah, I, I d- designed oh, it myself. Good. Yeah. Jeez, he's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, so I was kind of, that was a six-week um, block to get it uh, made and then I was like, all right, let's, uh, let's start working out a plan here. I didn't want to do it in public because that was like my worst nightmare. <laughs> um, I just want to do it somewhere isolated. So I thought, you know, Shart and I love going to visit wineries. Yep. Um, so I was like, oh, we'll go. You know, I use the excuse, oh, let's try and get away before the season starts, you know, because once the season starts, there's not much chance. It's a bit of a grind. And it's like, yeah, cool. Found this winery uh, in Red Hill. We booked accommodation and then they did like a picnic in the garden. I was like, oh, perfect. That's perfect. Um, and then locked that in and, you know, so I, I knew that was, that was going to happen then, but I didn't know like how exactly it would go down. So I wasn't really that nervous. And then we got there, sat down for the picnic and I was like, oh, when I'm actually going to get the ring out and get, get on my knee. And that's when I started getting really nervous. <laughs> um, and then she pulled out the champagne from the, the basket and she was like, oh, fill me, um, fill me, uh, you know, Popping the cork. The cork yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, but how about we have something to really celebrate first? And she turned around, I was on my, one knee and I was like, oh, good. I had, I had like this, <laughs> I had this full spiel to give her before I said, will you marry me? You know, like, I like want to be the rest of my life. Yeah. And, you know, but I completely forgot it. And um, so I just went with it, oh, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> and then I remembered and added that stuff on at the end, but. What, yeah. what does he get out of 10 for that? Oh, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> I like it. I'm glad you didn't do the public engagement. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't, wasn't me. What about the wedding planning itself? Are you hands on? Yeah. Oh, leave it up I yourself. thought it was going to be hands on at the start of it, you know, getting into the process. I was like, Really? I'm doing it my way. Why don't you get the cheer squad to Just make another the banner? <laughs> <laughs> I, <run> could. Through. <laughs> I could. That'd be I really don't. romantic. Yeah, I don't think Charlotte would be for <laughs> that, though. Um, but yeah, I was like, you know, I'm going to get involved in this and I'm going to do it how I want and I quickly realise it's not my day <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Charlotte wants certain things a certain way and I kind of quickly quickly backed off pretty Back quick. Back in your and, place. Uh, I'll just check up on the how the budget's going every now and then and <laughs> keep going, going in the right direction. <laughs> um, this weekend, uh, Jack, take on the Bombers. We've spoken a little bit already ab- about that game um, but it's now shaping as, as an important one. The players are about half a day more rested than Essendon, which will take everything we can get. Um, Eddie had Stadium too. Well, how do you think the boys will go um, come Sunday? Oh, I think we'll go. I think we'll go very well. Um, you know, it's been a good week. The coaches have given a really good review. Um, you know, we're, we're, they're doing a good job at identif- identifying the areas that um, will get us playing. You know, back into form. Um, so I think the Players are very clear on that. Um, we'll have a training t- tomorrow um, to get us right. And then, um, yeah, I'm confident that the wheel will turn and we'll find form soon. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Did you guys watch the Essendon Collingwood game as a group? Uh, not as a group. Uh, I know some players and coaches um, came to the game. Um, some players watched it from home. So, we're all doing our, our own thing, um, but majority of the boys would have would have watched it somewhere. And Jack, just for a bit more clarification around the foot, because um, everyone wants to know. So uh, let's do it. So we're in terms of the foot itself, it's it's all repaired really nicely. You're you're happy with how it is right now? Yeah. Because because yeah. I, I guess when when we hear about foot injuries, you know, you think of previous injuries uh, like the trend goes of this world, who who were sort of bridled by that for for yeah. some time, but but you, yeah, can allay those, you can allay those fears, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's definitely um, in a good spot. You know, I'm 100% confident when I come back, I'll be right. You know, it's the reason it's taken so long is because it's been different things mm. um, that have popped up that have just extended my rehab time. So, um, you know, with trainers, it was, uh, you know, the, um, the, the navicular, um, which is a really serious yeah. uh, bone to 
yep. to uh, to fracture and, and to injure. Whereas mine was just my metatarsal, which is a pretty common injury. Um, and that's kind of four to five months out. So, uh, you know, it started with my, my plantar fascia. Um, and then I had surgery on that. And then I was playing a couple of weeks. And then over the next three weeks, I just started getting sore and sore in my in my foot. Mm. And ended up, we got, we got it scanned. And um, we got it scanned and... It showed some bone stress there. Mm. I, I couldn't. I couldn't walk on it at that point. I was pretty confident I'd, uh, I'd fractured it, but uh, the scans didn't kind of show that at the time. And then, um, you know, we I obviously didn't play the rest of the season. I was in a moon boot on crutches for about a month, and uh, I wasn't feeling that great. Uh, I was still pretty sore. Um, and then they're like, "All right, I'll go, get back on the crutches till you feel safe or feel good." and get rid of the crutches then it was like all right now it's time to come out of the boot and I wasn't ready to come out of the boot yet I was still pretty sore and then you know all right keep the boot on for a couple of weeks and I was just like how come every time I'm I'm, mm. I'm supposed to be able to to do something you know improve I'm, I'm not and we, we got it re-scanned kind of end of Jan and it, and it did show that there was a fracture there and I, I, I I've I'm, my, my bones are still healing from mm. a fracture so you know that that was kind of good in my own head to just confirm that that um and for someone who wants to press go all the time just to pause is obviously real tough yeah yeah i, I was in a good headspace though because i I'd, I'd trained like i was sore all that year with my foot stuff and um you know when you can't go out there and and play with freedom it, it's it's even more frustrating to be honest so at the end of the season i was like you know what i'm going to take as much time as i need to to, to make it better so when I get out there I'm playing with some freedom and I feel good playing and I'm enjoying it um so I was in I was in the space of like you know what I don't care I'm sore I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get it right got to Jan I'm, I'm back running again and my ankle starts getting a bit stiff because I hadn't hadn't moved mm. it around a bit and I got a bit of a dodgy ankle so we kind of had to take a couple of weeks to get that right and then finally start feeling a little bit better I roll my other ankle and then it's like oh god and then I get that right and then the bone in my toe starts showing some stress mm. um, signs, so it's like, oh god, we, another month of rehab, and then um, maybe yeah. that we should get that foot transplant done. Yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah. <laughs> mind you, I think you've had just about every injury you could possibly have. Yeah, haven't oh, you? One foot, just yeah. about, but um, yeah, like all those things are like minor in the scale mm. of a navicular, but it's just they need time Dominos, to get yeah. to get better, and I finally feel like there's not many many more things in my foot I can, can ruin. <laughs> um, just uh, one more from the outer, um, just o- over Jack, um, Jake Lever. Obviously he's copped a bit of criticism recently, yep. copped the brunt of that. Um, this one from Todd, he says, how do you see his progress and do you think we'll see his Adelaide form soon? I suppose from my point of view, how's he holding up with, with all of that talk about his form? Oh, he's going. He's going very well. I think he. I thought he was a lot better on. Yeah, Tuesday oh, he, night he as was, well. it was. It was terrific. Super, yeah. It was terrific. His best game for us for sure. Mm. Um, but even even his first four five uh, four games, like he, he for one one of the way I think it was round two. Like he he won our kind of trademark backline player. Mm. You know, mm. because of what the team requires him to yeah. do. It's it's not, um, you know, it's it's not. Uh, it, you know the stuff he was doing at Adelaide and he's all Australian. Like, sure, we we'd love him to um, to find that form, and he will. But that's not what we need him to do. You know, we just need him to to play his role. And he was doing that for four weeks. So we're not in internally saying, um, oh, we we need him to get better and do better for us. Um, we we're happy with it, and mm. we we're like, you know what, he'll he'll find his feet um, soon. And I think he was. He was in great form against Richmond. He, he was terrific. One more from me, uh, another big in this week, Tommy McDonald. Uh, you must be wrapped for him. He too has had a frustrating start to the season. Yep, yeah, we uh, we've actually had the same toe injury. Um, so I've, I've done a bit of rehab with him and I'm looking forward to him getting, looking forward to him getting back out there. Um, you know, he's a, you know, best 22, so um, it's good to have him back out there again. Hey, Jack, do you play Fortnite? I don't anymore, but I did have a big patch of it. Well, there you go. There were quite a few questions. I yeah. apologise for all that. <laughs> Fortnite has just become the bane Beyond of my you? existence because I just don't understand it. It's, uh, it is a massive fat at the moment. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, I, I'm, I've, I've jumped off the uh, the bandwagon. You know, I played it when it was kind of first coming out, right, and so I enjoyed it. But trendsetter. I've got, yeah, uh, yeah, you could say that when it was cool. <laughs> when it was cool, not mainstream. Um, but I've got a new game now called God of War, which I'm really oh, enjoying. watch your space. Here we watch go. Watch your space. It's a oh, it's not the new Fortnite, but it's uh, it's a better game. Very good. Hey, Jack Viney, you're an absolute sister co-captain of the Footy Club. We're so wrapped for you that you're nearing uh, a return. Um, good luck in your recovery and good luck when you get back out there in the red and blue. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Me. And Katie Price, uh, terrific debut. I think you'd agree, Jack. She's, uh, she's done amazing. She has. Done amazing. How good's that? You, you done Wrapped good. From- <laughs> done good. <laughs> good. <laughs> that was Inside Melbourne for another week. Let's hope that this time next week we'll be talking about a big Melbourne week.